What is up, guys? It's Wednesday, and then I did my ball cards time. Paintball questions this week. Is Nick Laval still gonna be good with the new NXL center bunkers? Are paintball packages worth buying? And what paintball gun I'm gonna buy? First, before we start paintball question time, I uh, just like this video. Size of Chaos asks, with the new middle bunker, do you think Nick Laval will dominate as much as he did with the W? Uh, nope. So if you're unfamiliar, the NXL the past two years has used the W bunker, a big, huge center bunker. And a few weeks ago at World Cup, they announced that they will be using a new set of bunkers, getting rid of that big W. So there's gonna be the two big, huge bricks and four wings. So to answer that question, Nick Laval was very, very good at playing that W center bunker. It felt like he just had a really good knack or good feel for it. He kind of could anticipate when to move and could just play it really well. He was definitely a standout over the last two years with the addition of that W bunker. Nick was good before, but I really do believe that the W helped propel him into a new level of play and maybe like, I don't know, made him more paintball famous. So I do feel that getting rid of the W and going to that like new modular bunker system will kind of like prohibit or like reduce Nick Laval's effectiveness for impact. That's gonna be everybody, right? All the guys who play the W, it's gonna like hinder all of our play. I mean, that's the bunker I wanna go to. I love the W. I feel like I can shoot everyone from it and it's great. And the NXL getting rid of it is definitely gonna affect the way I play paintball. So while the NXL is getting rid of that W bunker, they're replacing it with more big stuff. So it's still possible that they could build like a huge center bunker and then it still be effective for Nick Laval or like myself and guys that used to play the W. So while I think he might not help impact as much, we never really know until the layouts come out. So maybe. So I'm taking back the no and it's gonna be a maybe. We'll see what happens at the first event. Platinum RC asked, are paintball marker packages worth it or should I buy each item separately? I'm a beginner who has only rented gear before and I'm looking to get into the sport. So that answer is yes and no. I think most of these packages out there that you're probably looking at aren't any good. Most of these packages that are built with like Tipman's, Spiders, and Azoden guns are really just designed to get you to buy stuff. They make them as cheap as possible. So they include like really generic masks, generic pods, belt, all this really inexpensive stuff to make it just seem like it's a good deal. But that's the problem, right? You get like really, really crappy stuff. Stuff that's not good, it's not gonna last, it's not comfortable, it's just not that good. So let's look at something. Let's look at a package that's on Amazon, the Tim and Cronus Paintball Gun Mega Set. So this package is perfect, right? It illustrates what I'm talking about to the T. Comes with a very good gun. I really like the Tipman Cronus, but it comes with all this other like really bad cheap stuff. Like the mask is awful, it's gonna fog, you can't buy replacement lenses for it. The pack is weird, like great, it holds six pods, comes with six pods, but it's made to hold a tank in the center and use a remote. And with this gun, you shouldn't be using a remote, it doesn't come with a remote, so it comes with like a weird pack. But they do that just to make it as cheap as possible and to be able to throw a bunch of stuff in there and make it sound like a good deal. So that's a good example of a package that's not any good, that comes with like a bunch of weird stuff you don't want. Let's look at one that I like, the Tipman A5 Advanced Paintball Gun Package. So I like this package, right? It comes with a Tipman A5, awesome gun, comes with a good compressed air tank, and a pack that is actually gonna be usable. This is an example of a good package. Another example is a package that I kinda helped build with BlackFridayPaintball.com. I did a video a couple weeks ago that's like, I don't know, what was it? The best $500 paintball gun setup. You can actually watch that video right there. We built a package that had the Mini GS, a 684500 Empire compressed air tank, and the GI Sports level. This is a package that actually makes sense. That package actually makes sense, but that's not a package you're gonna find everywhere. It's kind of one that I custom built that we made uh, to just bundle stuff together to show people what to buy. So it's rare that you're gonna find actually bundled packages that are good. And a lot of the time the packages aren't like better deals. Like that mini GS package, it's not a better deal. It's just kind of all shipped together. It's not any cheaper. You're still paying the regular price for all those things. It's not discounted because you're buying it together. So I personally would find out the exact items you want and just buy them all separate. It might take you longer, but you're gonna actually get the products that you want. You get the mask and hopper and tank and all that stuff you actually want, not the stuff that someone else wants you to buy. So buy it all separate. Yolo Hobo asked, I know right now you don't have a main paintball gun. What do you think you will be getting? I'm also in the market, but can't decide. Ah, dude, I don't know. So yeah, I don't have a gun. I sold my 3.5 a couple months ago. I don't have anything. 
So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna actually wait until after Paintball Extravaganza. So coming up here in a few months, we have GI Sports Core Day and Paintball Extravaganza. Core Day is like a trade show specifically for GI Sports. So it's gonna have like Tipman, Empire, GI, Spider, stuff at that. And then Paintball Extravaganza is coming up and that's where we have a lot of the dealers. We're gonna have like Bob Long will be there, Eclipse, like I don't know, GI will also be there, Ninja. Everyone in paintball is gonna be there. And those are both trade shows. They're gonna show off all the new products. And I have it on good authority that both Empire and Planet Eclipse will have new guns at either Core Day or Extravaganza. So I'm gonna wait until after that happens to decide what to buy. Uh, and if I don't like anything, I think I will be getting the LV 1.5. But I really hope that we see a new Vanquish. I would really like to check out the new Vanquish. Or maybe Planet Eclipse is gonna come out with like a CS2. I think you all know I want that. So I have no idea. Maybe it'll be a new Vanquish or maybe a new CS2-ish gun uh, if either of those companies come out with it. If not, the LV 1.5 is gonna be the paintball marker of choice in a few months here. I just like the LV 1.5 because it's fairly inexpensive. I mean, it's $1,000, so it's still a lot of money, but it's not $1,500 like the other Planet Eclipse guns. So I like that like $1,000-ish price. I think for me, that's kind of like the sweet spot. Yeah, oh, that's paintball question time, guys. If you have paintball questions, do submit them below or use hashtag PBQT. Uh, I'll find it. If I like the question, I think it's worth answering. Uh, you'll end up on paintball question time. Guys, yesterday was the third installment of Paintball Setup Wars. Uh, check that video out right there, or check out the Paintball Room My Life store by hitting the square box where you can get a cool shirt or one of those headbands.